There's a rumor going around that USMLA Step 2 CK could be following in the footsteps of Step 1 and changing to pass fail scoring. This potential change has massive implications for medical students, international medical graduates, and the entire residency application process. In this video, we'll dive deep into the reasons behind the step one change, compare them to the potential reasons for a step two CK change, discuss the possible timeline, and explore how you can best prepare for these exams under any circumstances. Let's get started. So before we dive into the rumors around step two CK going pass fail, let's talk about how step one went pass fail and the reasons behind it. So it's important to remember that the original purpose of step one and step two CK was to assess competence for practice. What step one became over time, however, was something different from what was originally intended. The reason for this is, is that residency applications have become more and more competitive over time. Because of this, step one became a major factor for residency programs to screen applicants. This was especially true for competitive specialties and competitive programs. So in the 2022 program director survey, the average residency program received roughly 1,030 applications. They could only holistically review roughly 435, which means they screened about 50% of applications, just rejected them automatically using automated screens, like on, you know, for step one and board scores and if you failed. And they sent interviews to only 130 applicants. Of those applicants, they only ranked 100, which means of the more than 1,000 applications that the average program received, fewer than 10% actually were ranked. And so in the years before step one went past fail, it's not a surprise that step one was consistently the number one most commonly cited factor that residency program directors considered in assessing applicants for interviews. So in order to understand the rationale behind some of these rumors of step two going pass fail, it's important to understand the rationale behind step one going pass fail. In March 2019, they convened a conference called the INGUS, the International Conference on USMLE Scoring, and they discussed having step one potentially go pass fail because it exceeded its original intent. Less than a year after that, they announced in February 2020 that step one would go pass fail. And the reasons that they cited were primarily that they wanted to restore step one to its original purpose, meaning they wanted it to assess competence for practice, not as a residency selection tool. They spoke at length actually about how step one was meant as a way of assessing someone's competence for practice, but it wasn't meant as a tool to assess someone that had like a good score versus like a better score as a way of assessing, you know, higher levels of someone's potential clinical competence. They also talked about wanting to reduce overemphasis on step one scores to address racial and demographic disparities and to promote a holistic evaluation of applicants. Now, if you look at these reasons and you replace step one with step two CK, it's hard not to see that the rationale could basically be used to make step two CK pass fail. All of these things are true. Right? Step two is the original purpose was as an assessment of competency. They don't want to overemphasize step two CK scores, that there are racial and demographic disparities, and that they want to promote a holistic evaluation of applicants. And so it's not hard to imagine why rumors of step two CK going pass fail have been growing recently. The most recent one that I've heard was from, this is admittedly secondhand, but it was from someone who'd had a longer discussion with a program director from a prominent East Coast program, I won't name which, in a competitive specialty where it had said, you know, I don't know when this is is going to happen, but I'm pretty confident that step two CK is going to go to pass fail. So if step two CK does go pass fail, what might happen? We can look at the two years of data since that to try and guess what might happen. One possibility is that the failure rate for step two will go up. I say this because the failure rate for step one went up pretty dramatically in the years following step one going pass fail. For example, in 2020, which is the year that step one was announced to be going pass fail, the failure rate was only 2% meaning 98% of USMD first time takers passed the exam. In 2022, the first year that it went past fail, the failure rate jumped to 7%, meaning the passing rate was only 93%, which is a three and a half times increase in just a matter of two years. For DOs, it was a similar rise in failure rate where there was a 3% failure rate in 2020 and it jumped to 11%, which is nearly a four times increase in the year following it going past fail. And for IMGs, the fail rate went from 13% in 2020 to 26%. So that was absolute increase in 13% of the people that were failing that were IMGs. Other effects of step one going past fail are likely to also be true for step two, and in some ways may even be 
more dramatic. And so program directors talked about losing an evaluation tool. This is mainly anecdotal, but there has been a sort of steady stream of stories of an increase in emphasis on research and letters of recommendation and personal connections, both in program director surveys of what they anticipated would happen, as well as anecdotes from medical students and hearing people's approaches to how it is that they're trying to get into particularly competitive residency programs. If step two goes pass fail, presumably this is going to be even more true because at least when step one went pass fail, everyone just sort of assumed, okay, well, step two is going to be the new sort of the new step one, which I think in, in many ways that has been true. If step two goes pass fail, it would also presumably disadvantage the same groups as it did before, including IMGs who oftentimes used USMLEs to differentiate themselves from the US counterparts, given how much harder it is to get into residencies as an international medical graduate, as well as people who don't have strong research credentials or don't have a lot of interest in doing research, since there appears to have been an increase in emphasis on research, as well as people who don't go to brand name schools. That was actually one of the things that showed up in surveys was program directors saying that step one going pass fail was going to hurt people that didn't go to more sort of famous schools like the Harvards or the Stanfords of the world. Are you enjoying these USMLE tips? Hit like and subscribe and ring the bell to get all the latest strategies to boost your residency chances. So if step two CK would potentially go pass fail, when might it happen? Let me start again by emphasizing that these are just rumors. And not only are they rumors, there has been no official announcement yet that they're even considering this. This is just rumors that I've heard from a couple different sources. Let's just put on our hypothetical caps and imagine a world in which step two does go pass fail. When might it happen? We don't know, these are just rumors. However, the step one timeline can give us at least some insights into how long this might take. As a recap, in March of 2019, they first talked, they held a conference talking about it called the Incus. And less, about a year afterwards, they made the announcement that step one would go pass fail. And then two years after that is when they actually implemented the changes. And so let's, if we speculate on a step two CK timeline, presumably first we'd have to have some sort of conference where they can get all of the different stakeholders involved in the same room. An announcement maybe might follow within a year or two. And then who knows, maybe implementation would be two or three years after that. Again, these are all just like hypothetical scenarios. If step two does go pass fail, then it's probably not going to impact current students, anyone that is currently in medical school. The reason being that if it does happen, it, we're probably looking at like at least a three year timeline for it to actually be implemented, which means that even if you were entering this year in 2024, it probably wouldn't affect your applications because you would take step two before the changes were implemented. The people that I think it would impact the most would be potentially future medical students, as well as people that are potentially going to take significant time off in medical school, namely people like MD PhDs or other people that might take more than say like a year or two off. So the other question that you may be asking is if step two were to go pass fail, what would be the way that you could maximize your chances of getting into residency now. One thing that I've kind of concerted is, is that step one may paradoxically become more important. And the reason for that is, is that if step one is pass fail and step two is pass fail and the average residency program has a thousand applications and is you know filtering out roughly 50% of them, then they're still going to need some sort of standardized measure that they can use to screen people out. And there's only so much that you can do by looking at school grades and things like, you know, letters of recommendation, things like that, since those are harder to sort of standardize. One possibility is, is that they, that shelf exams are going to take on more importance, which if that's true, then I would imagine that people would want to do better on step one to lay a strong foundation. Because if you take step one and you barely pass it, and then two months later, you're taking your internal medicine shelf exam, which is really, really hard, and it's going to be a score that's going to matter even more on your application, then probably it's not gonna go great, right? Like generally in our experience, when you see someone who's just like barely squeaked by studying for step one, they don't do great on their shelf exams, right? Like those things that in all the correlational studies that I saw previous to step one going past fail, it showed that there's a strong correlation between step one scores, shelf exam scores, and step two. So wanting to do well on step one in order to both bolster your foundation so that you can kind of do well on shelf exams from the start makes a lot of sense. Another thing about studying is, is that it's presumably going to reward people that are able to master, retain, and apply the information because they're gonna be both more efficient and efficacious. That's particularly important because you're going to want a more well-rounded application if research experiences are gonna be more important, if you're going to need more time to be able to develop meaningful relationships and get better letters of recommendation. Also, if you are choosing medical schools, you may want to consider schools with stronger reputations, since in most of the surveys that I have seen, that <laughs> 
that most people believe that is, has become more important now that step one is pass fail and or look for schools that are going to give you more research opportunities. Since again, that is also presumably going to be more important now that step one is pass fail. And especially if step two is going pass fail, then those other things that residency program directors have traditionally looked at are going to take on more importance. And finally, you can like and subscribe and ring the bell so that you can stay on top of important changes. In short, the potential change of step two to pass fail could be a game changer for how you strategize your residency application. However, the ultimate goal should be to master, retain, and apply the material so effectively that you not only excel in exams, but also become an exceptional physician. To learn proven strategies for studying smarter, not harder, and maximizing your chances of matching into your dream residency, check out my other videos. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.